Chapter 45. Chapter 45 is quite interesting. Because now we are going to look at the piece of uh, real estate that God has set aside for His people. We saw this uh, last week, right? This, this is a piece of land that God has set aside for uh, the temple and also for the government. And He has given very, very clear instructions about <coughs> that which is for the Sadokites with the sanctuary in, inside. And then that, there is for something for the Levites under the Aaron. Um, and then there is one place for the people, the rest of the people. And right now, can you, can you find this in Israel? No, not yet. But this is in the millennium, and it is big. So that is uh, chapter 45. So, verse 1 to 5, we have the portion of land for the sanctuary. Verse 6 is for the city. 7 and 8 for the prince and then finally instructions or ordinances for the priest, prince now let me just read before I show you the diagram so you at least get some uh, uh, introduction verse 1 moreover when you divide the land by lot into inheritance, by lot, uh, into inheritance, it looks like uh, so that nobody will say, I, I came here first. Joke, you know, like throw tissue paper, Singapore is going to It's by lot. So when you divide the land by lot into inheritance, you shall set apart a, a district for the lot. Okay. And we shall read that this. This is a district for the temple. Anyway, you shall set apart a district for the Lord, a holy section of the land. Its length shall be 25,000 cubits and the width 10,000. It shall be holy throughout its territory all around. Of this, there shall be a square plot for the sanctuary, 500 by 500 rods, with uh, 50 cubics around it for an open space. So this is the district you shall measure, 25,000 cubics long and 10,000 wide. In it shall be the sanctuary, the most holy place. It shall be a holy section of the land, belonging to the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary, who come near to minister to the Lord. It shall be a place for their houses, and a holy place for the sanctuary. An area 25,000 cubics long and 10,000 wide shall belong to the Levites. The ministers of the temple, they shall have 20 chambers as a possession. Are you lost or still with me? That's <laughs> why so if you just read this, uh, why? Suddenly, it is like God has introduced something new. You have never come across in all the, our study from Genesis and then nothing. Now talk about millennials, come on with this. Uh. Wow, must read again, right? Okay, okay, but let me help you. What it means, what it means if, you, if I have the bigger picture. What it means, this, you know, Israel is like that. It is down, yeah, elongated. And there is one section in the center. One section between uh, Jordan River. Okay, from, from your side, Jordan River is this side. Let's see if I can find the map.
Okay, so this, this is Israel. Okay, with all the 12 tribes, 11 tribes all over. Now, this is Judah. So there is one section, this is talking about millennium in the future. There will be one section of land here that will be section off. And in this land, God is going to separate into three segments. Um, you have the portion for the Levites from Aaron, and then you have a section for the Levites from Zadok, and then you have one more section for the people uh, of the city there. And this is cutting across from the Dead Sea until the Mediterranean Sea. So it's just section off for the worship and also for the government. And if you look at this, wow, how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? Right now you go, it's quite mountainous. Huh? Where you find that flat piece of land? You will come to that. So back to this. Now you follow the diagram, even as we read this, then you get a clearer understanding. You see, God's purpose, huh? when, when the day comes in the future, is going to be new. And, and He's going to do a new thing. And this is something that right now eh, you don't comprehend. But look at the instruction. He gave it very clearly. Moreover, when you divide the land into by lot into inheritance, you shall set aside, set apart a district. Verse 1. For the Lord. So for the Lord, that means this is a temple district. A holy section of the land. Its land shall be 25,000 cubics. 25,000 cubics. From here to here, 25,000 cubics. Each cubic, this cubic is the long cubic. This is not the, this cubic is not measuring here to here, but with the hand breath, the longer, the royal cubic. So 25,000 of that. So it's quite long. So it is about eight and a half, eight and a one eight miles. It's about 13 point something kilometers. Very long. Or if you have BC, a 13 and a half miles long. Oh, you can't see one end from another. So this is what it is. And then 10,000, which is three and a quarter miles. So, a holy section of the land, its length shall be 25,000 cubics, which is 13.34 kilometers, and the width 10,000, which is 5.35 kilometers. It shall be holy throughout its territory, all around. Of this, there shall be a square plot for the sanctuary. So talking about this holy, this holy land, right? This holy district, there shall be a square plot for the Century. In the earlier chapters, we have been studying the construction of this century. What is the measurement? 500 by 500 rocks. You read again? 500 by 500 rocks. No, no, no. Uh, 500. Each rod is how many cubics? Each rod, how many cubics? Or read? Six cubics. Six cubics. Okay, so don't worry about this uh, uh, open space and so on. So it should be 500 rocks according to the Bible. Okay, don't worry about the diagram. But in this holy district, that is where, because now, now we've been studying the construction of the temple, construction of the sanctuary, but where exactly is this? So now God is going to the big picture. After constructing the small one, now where is this? This is here. In this holy district, it is here. You know how small in comparison to 500 rods by 500 rods. Each rod is 6 cubics. 6 times. And it is found here. We read on. With 50 cubics around it for an open space. So, this 500 by 500 also has a 50 cubic space, a, a separation, a border, so to speak, border. Uh, but here they put 500 cubic. Now, why uh, 
if you go and look at a few, which I do every, every time I study, I look at a few uh, commentaries, I look at a few scholars and teachers and so on. Uh, some of them use, they say, no, it cannot be rocks, it's cubics. So they put 500 cubics. So everything all become cubic instead of using raw. But from what I studied, uh, in terms of measurement and so on, it should be raw. So for this, they put cubic, but it is 500 rods. Later, I will show you the next diagram. Uh, I'll, I'll, if we go through this, then I ask you to look at the next diagram, then you tell me which diagram is correct. Okay? So that's studying. Otherwise, sometimes you pick the wrong book, and then you study and you believe it. And then, how? Okay? So, we want the truth. So, stick with this first. So you have that 50 cubics around it for an open space. So this is the district you shall measure. So God repeats, this is the district you shall measure 25,000 cubics uh, long and 10,000 wide. So God repeats, 25,000 and 10,000. In it shall be the sanctuary, the most holy place. So inside this shall be the sanctuary, the most holy place. So God repeats so that it is clear. You don't go and do this and then you put this in outside. But humans can make the mistake, right? So God is very clear. So it shall be a holy section of the land. Verse 4. Belonging to the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary, who come near to minister to the Lord. Who are the priests who come near to minister to the Lord? Zadokites. It shall be a place for their houses and a holy place for the sanctuary. So, that's why this is the area for the priests. The priests and the, of the sons of Zadok live here and they minister to the Lord in the temple. So this is for the Zadok priests. Settled? Now we go on to the next district. Verse 5. An area 25,000 cubics long and 10,000 cubic uh, wide shall belong to the Levites, the ministers of the temple. So who are the ministers of the temple now? Who is doing maintenance of the temple now? The Levites from the tribe of Aaron. Yeah. So they have been demoted, so to speak. So they take care of this district now, still same. 25,000, 10,000, they will be here. Area for the Levites, they live here and are responsible for the caretaking of the temple. So you read, they shall have 20 chambers as a possession. So for them to stay and live forever. That is for the Levites. But if you read Joshua 21 and you read 1 Chronicles chapter 6 and so on, you will remember there were cities called Levite cities. They don't have land, but they got Levite cities. All over the land. So just now I show you the, uh, no, this one. They got cities all over. And now, now, under the new third temple, the holy section that God has prepared for them, they will all be staying here, no longer the Levite cities all over the place. So in the day to come, the, the application, we will be from all corners of the world, the, the, the believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we will all be assembled at one place in the heavens with Jesus. Okay. But for now, we see, God has accommodated them there. Then verse 6. Now if you want, if you want a reference, uh, Joshua 21 verse 1 to 44, 42. Joshua 21 verse 1 to 42. You will find, you read everything about the Levite cities. And then uh, First Chronicles, what uh, 6, 54 to 81. First Chronicles 6, 54 to 81. You'll find all the Levite cities. Joshua 21, verse 1 to 42. 
So the, the, the lesson here is they were spread everywhere, but in the millennium, they will all be accommodated in one place. That is their city. So like for us, we are all over, but the day shall come, we will all be taken up and we go to one place. So now we come to verse 6. So we are Levites. Huh? Yeah, no. You are priests, what? No, we are Levites. No, la, this is on earth. We will be in heaven. We are priests. Uh, I mean, we are priests, royal priests of Christ. Okay, now we come to verse 6. You shall appoint as the property of the city. So, property for the city. An area 5,000 cubits wide and 25,000 cubits long. <coughs> so, you shall appoint for the district city 25,000 long and 5,000 half the width. So, 5,000 uh, cubits, one and five eighths of a mile. And we read, I want you to read this carefully, then you compare this with the next diagram. Um, you shall appoint as the property of the city an area 5,000 cubits wide and 25,000 long. Adjacent, adjacent means what? Next to, right? Adjacent to the district of the holy section. So next to the holy section, which is the holy section? That one or this one? This one, right? So it should be next to this. So God's instruction, very clear. It shall be adjacent to the district of the holy section. It shall belong to the whole house of Israel. So the whole house of Israel can stay here. True or not? No lah. And no, no place ah. Then you gotta build like HDB. Build up, build up, build up. You know. But when they come into this place to worship the Lord, this is where they will be coming. They will, they don't go in there. Yeah, they come. But they will stay later, as I will show you. They will still have their allotment of land in the whole of Israel, but will be different from the days of Joshua. Will be different, but they are everywhere. But when it comes to worship, when they come here, they will be here. Okay, this is for the people, and for those who are here, area for crops, produce for workers, and so on in the city. But those who are not in the city, out. Out there for you. Now, when I was searching for diagrams uh, to show you, well, you you look well, hey, correct like this the one. But I also saw this. One. I also saw this. You see, sure. this is the priest. This, so this is Zadok priest, the holy section, because the sanctuary is there. Right? And then put the Levites and then put the city here. So I was confused. As something God God cannot leave it for us to aga aga and the ship here, ship there, feel like you know, what if they put the thing here and so, so I had to read again and, read. and then on my third reading then I found the word adjacent to the district of the holy section. This is not adjacent to the so it cannot be this diagram so what I'm telling you is when you study make sure you don't just stick with one reference you must look at the few not all the scholars are correct but this diagram looks nice huh? <laughs> not correct okay we are not over with this yet still got here and here and this is to the Medic because beyond this is the Mediterranean Sea. And this side, this side will be the Dead Sea. So we want to see what is this for? And who owns it? Verse 7. The prince shall have a section on one side and the other of the holy district and the city's property and bordering on the holy district and the city's property, extending westward on the west and eastward on the east. And the land shall be side by side with one of the tribal sections. 
from the west border to the east border. This land shall be his possession in Israel. Are you confused? Okay. Now, the prince. We we are agreeable that this prince is not Jesus, right? Because the earth is his. The earth is his. Everything. Why must give him land? Everything is his. So, let's say it is King David, and like me so, King David. If you study the, the Samuel and Kings and Chronicles and so on, were the kings given land? <coughs> were the kings given land? Were they given land? No, they were not given land. The land belonged to all the other tribes. All the other tribes. But the king was here in Jerusalem. And he has his palace. He has his palace. And they put the palace near the temple. If you are of good, you are a good king and you revere God, you will really seek. You know, sanctify uh, the things in the temple. But there were many bad kings and they brought abomination into the temple. So in the third temple, they'll be separated. So separated, then where do they go? So, God has given them the land. You see, in this, this is a square piece of land. So outside here, on the west side, from here, they say the the border of the sections, you read the one, huh? um, the land shall be side by side with one of the tribal portions from the west to the east border. Okay, I must well show you this. Under Joshua's time, when they were distributed, uh, allotted land, you find, or oh, Asher is here, Naphtali is here, Manasseh wants to be here, Gad is here, yeah, Reuben, and, and half here, half here, and then you have Benjamin, and, and Judah, Simeon, and so on. Remember? Mm -hmm. But, when we come to chapter 47, 48, in the millennium, life will be simpler. Now draw straight, straight lines, okay? So, they will be, I'll tell you how they were allocated. So, you look at this big picture. Here, this is Dead Sea, Mediterranean. This is Judah, Jerusalem. And so, this is the sanctuary. So, this is the holy section. L. This one is the Levites. And then this is the city. And then on this area to here, this one belongs to the prince. So, from here to here, belong to the prince. And this is this is tribal land, right? Tribal. So border with them and border with them. <coughs> and then on this side, same thing. Here to here belong to the prince. So previously the prince got no land. Now the prince got land. So anything outside this square is yours. And you will border with the tribes. Tribal land. Clear enough? Yes. Okay, we read again. The prince shall have a section of shall have a section on one side or and the other of the holy district and the city's property. So, so we'll have this and this and this, this bordering in the city. And uh, where are we? And the city's property extending westward on the west side and eastward on the east side. So west to Mediterranean. Beautiful, better than East Coast Beach. Very nice. Uh, and then East side to the Dead Sea. The land shall be the side by side with one of the tribal portion. So this is the land, right? We may talk about land. So this will be land side by side with one of the tribal. This is with the other of the tribal. So you can't go wrong. You follow God's instruction. From the west border to the east border. So from here to here. Here to here. The land shall be his possessions in Israel. And 
My princess shall no more oppress my people, but they shall give the rest to the land, the rest of the land to the house of Israel, according to their tribes. But before we we study verse eight, right now you look at this, you look at the geography. How is this possible? We went to Israel, right? Wow. When you go, this is highland, so you go up Jerusalem. You go up Jerusalem. How will this happen? That suddenly there will be a piece of land flat enough for this to take place. So we look at Zechariah. Huh? So you cannot pick and choose the study of the Bible. You must read. You must read the whole thing. So you turn to Zechariah chapter 14. And Zechariah chapter 14, Zechariah the second last book of the Old Testament. And this is about the last battle that shall take place. If I read from verse 3, Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. This is the last battle. And it is the battle of Armageddon. You all see the movie, right? Armageddon. <coughs> As he fights in the day of battle, and in that day, his feet will land. Well, no, his feet will stand on the mount of olives, which is overlooking the eastern gate, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the mount of olives, where Jesus stood, shall stand shall be split in two from where to where from east to west making a very large valley half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it shall move toward the south and then verse 5 is a uh, god will say they will the jews will flee uh, to jordan side to take refuge because the antichrist and so on but what it means here, this Mount of Olive, this mountain here, will split. Half will go up, half will come down, leaving a very large valley. And it is in this. Again, when we study Ezekiel, it is not mentioned. Not specifically mentioned, but if you study uh, like scholars study Zechariah and, and, so, and, and, and Ezekiel, then likely, likely, this location of the district of this is likely to be here after the Mount of Olives split north and south. Why not split east and west? But north and south. So God's design. So that this, there will be a provision of the land as what he wants for this to be constructed. For this to be done, set aside. Got it? Okay. We will come to Zechariah in a few weeks again. Very easy kill. So, Interesting of studying Old Testament. But you must study with diagrams. And the right diagram. Don't look at the wrong one. Great. So we have just covered the sacred portion of the land. Now we go on to verse 9. Is it verse 9? Okay, no. Verse 8 first. The land shall be his possession. Whose possession? The prince in Israel. And my princes, my princes, there are other leaders to help David. Because he, he, the, the place is so big and so, so there are others to help him. And my princes shall no more oppress my people. It means in the past they've been oppressing, which we knew. Yeah? They were oppressing the poor and, and the needy and, and, and uh, they were not fair, unrighteous, the innocent got punished and so on. 
but they shall give the rest of the land to the house of Israel. So, the rest of the land. That time, uh, the king, uh, he thinks he owned the whole real estate. So, the rest, so, he will not be satisfied with here and here. The king will want here and here. You follow me? But God say, you will not oppress the people anymore. The princess will be here and here. That's it. The rest belong to the rest of Israel. <coughs> According to their tribes, which we will study when we come to chapter 47. Verse 9, thus says the Lord God, Enough! Go O princes of Israel, remove violence and plundering, execute justice and righteousness, and stop dispossessing my people. So that means if you read the opposite, uh, that means in the past, uh, this is what you were doing to the people. Says the Lord God, you shall have honest scales and honest <coughs> ephah and an honest bath. Maybe they didn't bathe the tea. No, 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 no. This is different. Uh. I'll show you later. The ephah and the bath shall be of the same measure so that the bath contains one tenth of a homer and the ephah one tenth. Uh, and the ephah one tenth of a homer and their, their measure shall be according to the homer. The shekel shall be 20 giras, 20 shekels, 25 shekels, and 15 shekels shall be your mina. Can follow? No? Yeah, I won't test you. No? Because today we use sing dollar and ringgit and baht and... But, um, what, what you need to know is God wants honesty. Because the people had been cheating. Like, you go to fish market many, many years ago. <coughs> my, my mom always looks see whether because they, they half catty, but then you do not know what they put there and so on. Yeah. Uh, God wants honesty. Deal honestly with your people. And he gave instructions for both liquid measure and also dry measure. And he standardized the thing. Today we have metric system. All before that there was imperial system. But he gave measurement. Don't don't memorize. Okay? You can have this diagram. Uh, look at bar, kin, and log, and ifa, and uh, homer, and so on. But this side is for liquid. This side is for dry, for dry goods. <coughs> Whatever it is, measure them accordingly, and everyone does the same, and people get what they pay for. That is honesty. So the lesson to us is also. Do not cheat. Do not be covetous. Yeah. Uh, and one more. So, be fair and be just. So, we move on to verse 13. Now, we go on to the offering. And you will, as we read, uh, you see, wow, offering, offering, offering. So, what are these? Uh, are these the time? <coughs> are these the time? Okay, you tell me. So this is the offering which you shall offer. You shall give one sixth of an ephah from a homer of wheat and one sixth of an ephah from a homer of barley. The ordinance concerning oil, the bath of oil, is one ten of a bath from a core. A core is a homer or ten baths. For ten baths are a homer. Wow. <laughs> Tell you what, all the thing, all the, I don't know. How to, you know. But if you go and, 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 and compute and measure and so on, uh, you will you, you will get the, the quantity. And I will tell you it is not one ten. It is like one over sixty or one over hundred. Eh? But then this is not the time. Yes. These offerings are not the time. These are not the time. These are just uh, offerings. And that's why they use the word tithe. It's offering that they are to give. And 
Verse 15. And one lamb, this one is very clear, and one lamb shall be given from a flock of 200. Hey, 200, 110 is how many? 20, right? Mm-hmm. God said one. From the rich pastures of Israel, there shall be for, this shall be for grain offerings, burnt offerings, and peace offerings to make atonement for them. But not one tenth. So the instructions are different, says the Lord God. All the people of the land shall give this offering, not tithe, offering, for the prince in Israel. So they give unto the prince, <coughs> King David. Then what shall this prince do? Verse 17. Then it shall be the prince's part to give birth offerings, grain offerings, and drink offerings, at the feasts, the new moons, the Sabbaths, and at all the appointed seasons of the house of Israel. So they will still continue with their worship unto God. They will celebrate the seven feasts every year, the new moons, which is to celebrate the beginning of the month, and then to celebrate the birth, uh, the, the Sabbath, and, and, and the different seasons. So they still celebrate, so they still bring sacrifices, but God give the quantity, the requirement, but lesser. But still to do so unto the Lord. Now, tell me in verse 17, is this Prince Jesus Christ? But you're going to read, and some are very uh, notable scholars and commentators of the Bible and so on. Uh, Many say this is Jesus. Uh, because he, he, he'll be ruling and reigning in the temple, and so he offering, then this is the prince he will give. But many more, and I agree with them, that this is not Jesus. From, from when we started the last chapter, and so we talked about the prince, we already given you some evidence that this is not Jesus. And this is a very clear evidence. Verse 17. Then it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings, grain offerings, and drink offerings. Jesus gave himself. He was the offering. He had already made his offering. He is the one and for all offering. He was the offering. He doesn't need to offer anymore. You understand? The Jews uh, every year is bring their lamb, bring their sheep, bring their uh, bird and so on. They give offering, but they didn't give of themselves. They still got to go and bring it every year. But Jesus gave of himself. He was the offering. And by so doing, he has done the ultimate. He doesn't need to offer. So it cannot be Jesus. Now if Jesus go and give offering, give offering for what? For who? For himself? For what? He has already offered. So it cannot be Jesus. But this people of Israel led by King David, they still have to do it to remember what God has done for them. I mentioned three things. The awfulness of sin. I mentioned the the sacrifice that Jesus paid. And then the third thing is the holiness of God. So as they do this, then they remember, yeah, we were we were sinners, we were doing we were, we were living in sin, it is so awful. But somebody paid the price. That is the sacrifice, the highest sacrifice that Christ paid. And you know, after that, we need to lead a holy life. We cannot continue in our own ways. That is the holiness of God. So as they go through all these sacrifices and worship and offering and so on, is to remember these three things. So that they will never forget. And why would Jesus need to do this? So that's why when you study and you read and all this and you listen, you have to be discerning. Go and see, is this right or not right? And I tell you, go back to the Bible like the variants and read. God is very clear. <coughs> so don't just listen and follow blindly. Like so, and, uh, and, at all the appointed seasons of the house of Israel, he shall prepare the sin offering. For Jesus himself? No, he doesn't need to. 
for who sinned for himself? No. So this is the King David, the co-regent. He shall prepare the sin offering, the grain offering, the burnt offering, and the peace offerings to make atonement for the house of Israel. For those people who say it is Jesus, you know, uh, like baptism, uh, he wants to identify with the people, you know, to go through the water of baptism. So now he wants to identify with them in, in the worship as well. Uh, different context. Different context. So, this is not Jesus. But the prince who had been appointed to be a co regent with Jesus. Verse 18. Thus says the Lord God in the in the last section as we read here, you will find three things mentioned about the new year, which is important to the Jews, about the Passover, which is important to the Jews, because that was the deliverance of the Jews from Egypt, and that is the mercy of God. That night they were set free, delivered from bondage in Egypt. Then there is the tabernacle, the feast of the tabernacle. Why is the tabernacle important to be remembered? Because these were the days when they were in the wilderness. And so until today when they celebrate the tabernacle feast, they also go and stay in those makeshift uh, tents and so on to remember that their forefathers were stayed in this during the wilderness march. To remember. So we start with the new year. Thus says the Lord God, in the first month, on the first day of the month, so in the first month of the year, that's what it means. In the first month of the first day of the month, you shall take a young bull without blemish. Always offer the best to the Lord and cleanse the sanctuary. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorpost of the temple. You know, outside the temple got the two poles. We saw last week the two. Yeah. And on the four corners of the ledge of the altar. Remember last week we also saw the altar? Yeah. So this are the oh, this is the altar, the four corners, the posts. Then the post is here. This is the entrance of the temple, this one post it, and then the post there. Where am I? Am I at okay, <laughs> Yes, sister, where am I? 19. 19. Okay. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorpost of the temple and on the four corners of the ledge of the altar and on the gate post of the gate of the inner court. So, uh, going further from here is the inner court. Okay. So, they'll be putting it there. All this can only be done. All this can only be done in the inner court. You can't, you don't do this in the outer court. So all this done within this area. So put the blood here, put the blood at the four corners, and then put at the inner court. But we can't see this block. And verse 20. And so you shall do on the seventh day of the month for everyone who has sinned unintentionally or in ignorance. Thus you shall make atonement for the temple. So, God is merciful. He, he knows that sometimes we accidentally or ignorantly we make a mistake, we commit a sin. God provides. No, mistake. Chop. Okay? So that is the grace and mercy of God. Verse 21. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, in the first, this is Nisan. N-I-S-A-N. You must read Exodus and so on. Then you know. N-I-S-S-A-N. That's a car. This is wrong. <laughs> on the 14th day of the month, you shall observe the Passover. A feast of seven days. <coughs> Unleavened bread shall be eaten. And on that day, the prince shall prepare for himself and for the people 
and for all the people of the land a bull for a sin offering for their sins Jesus went to the cross for who sin? for our sin so he has done it once and for all so we don't need to then verse 23 on the seven days of the feast he shall prepare a burnt offering to the Lord seven bulls and seven rams without blemish daily for seven days and a kid of the goats daily for a sin offering and he shall prepare a grain offering of one ephah for each bull and one ephah for each ram together with a hint of oil for each ephah so we finish with the new year we finish with the passover now the last feast in the seventh month and you read leviticus the seventh month is for the celebration of the tabernacle on the 15th day of the month at the feast he shall do likewise for seven days according to the sin offering the burnt offering the grain offering and the oil and that is to remind them of all that God has done for them from the days that they were in bondage and he, how he delivered them and how he provided for them even in the wilderness and father indeed we are also very thankful to you for your grace and mercy upon our lives Lord, we were lost and you found us and you took our place at the cross and you made the ultimate sacrifice. You did all this so that we need not have to do the same. But one thing you require of us and that is to walk in holiness before you. So Father, we thank you once again for this goodness of yours. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us and you will enable us to make you the center of our lives and that we will do in everything and in all occasions to be your shining example, role models, and to be your ambassadors unto the world. In Jesus' name, Amen.